Oh man, I can't exactly say that I was looking forward to finish watching this debate. If you missed part one, don't sweat it. So far, this has just been the Seinfeld of debates. It's about nothing. Nothing but bullshit. And his answer was abdication of personal responsibility, sin, to what extent are we individually responsible? There's something is wrong in the black community. The left wants to say racism is the cause, but no one's figured out the cause. There's a problem here. Black culture has been on a steady crash. How much worse can it get? Cardi B or something. To a great extent, the solution is for individual black people uh, to get their act straight. Black people are responsible for the vast majority of the problems. Does this sound like it answered this? my question as to why white people deny systemic racism? I don't think Why do I'm not don't. done talking, buddy? It's because your question is stupid. Also, it's racist. Why does everything in the goddamn world have to always revolve around white people? Do you not understand that not every problem in the world is caused by and needs to be solved by white people? We're all familiar with the homeless alcoholic. Liquor bottle in hand, you find them passed out drunk in the gutter. An ordinary non-insane person would be sympathetic to his plight. They'd want to do something like give him directions to the nearby AA meeting. Maybe help him get admitted to a hospital for a detox. Of course, before you can do anything to help this man, a gang of bearded millennial assholes comes out of nowhere. Why are you helping this guy? You need to start admitting that white people are racist. If this gang of soy-fed assholes showed up every time someone tried to help the alcoholic, he never quit drinking. Is it any surprise then that nothing ever changes in black communities? Cannot, I'm, I mean, I'm thinking about the most racist people I've ever met in my um, reporting career, and I have encountered, unfortunately, some really, truly gruesome people, uh, um, you know, over the last 10 years, and I can't think of a single person who's ever said to me, black people have absolutely zero inheritance from any of this, and uh, everything everything they have is, is uh, uh, better than whites. I just don't think the person that you're suggesting actually exists. Look, man, black people didn't just inherit high crime rates from slavery or segregation. All of that started to climb after the Civil Rights Act was passed. The same thing is true of black victimization. Prior to this, there was a relative parity in crime rates between the races. I'm not going to disagree with Milo, though. Part of this explosion of crimes by blacks reflects their anger. Anger over how they were treated in U.S. history. However, all of us know that anger is self-destructive. This is true when individuals lash out violently. It's also true when entire ethnic groups do the same. The mature, sober solution to this is to forgive and to adapt. However, this is never going to happen so long as people like Jangles would rather stoke and revel in the anger. And that's exactly what tells you everything you need to know about these people. Are you serious when you, okay, now this is a rhetorical question, it's not an actual question. Are you serious when you say people don't do this? Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, Dave Rubin, even Sam Harris, you know. These aren't real conservatives. Now Ben Shapiro will sometimes say vaguely conservative things. You know, things like marriage is important and people need religion. Okay, Ben, how about we have high school start urging students to get married when they reach age 18? Why don't we allow prayer in school? If you start actually trying to apply conservative principles to actual policy, people like Ben Shapiro will walk it back immediately. This is because Ben Shapiro is not at his core a conservative. He's a libertarian. Jordan Peterson, Dave Rubin, fucking Sam Harris? Are you kidding me? None of these people are remotely conservative. I mean, right now you're talking to Milo fucking Yiannopoulos. He himself is a famous conservative personality. I mean, one would expect him to be more conservative than the aforementioned people. So why don't you just ask what his opinion is instead of bringing up these other people? And as Americans, it's one of our big ethos, you know, freedom, liberty, we believe in a just world. And we believe that people have control over their own actions and that the, your actions cause the fate that you are in. The problem with this is that it often works backwards. You give post hoc rationalizations. Instead of having a linear period of time where a, you can see a bunch of things happening and that's what led to where this person is now, you almost never see that. You see rioting and looting. You see terrible neighborhoods. You see high crime statistics. And instead of thinking, I wonder if there was something that caused this, no, you work backwards. 
and give a post hoc rationalization. So we'll say, well, they're in this terrible position, but it must be because they deserve to be there. No, Jack, yes. The truth is conservatives want to help black people. We're the only ones offering them the advice they need. If blacks could get married more often, if they could commit less crimes, if they could use less drugs and do better in school and test higher on exams, then they could put an end to these problems. I know this is true because there are a lot of successful black people. There are black judges, doctors, movie stars, CEOs, and everything else. These black people exist, so stop denying that. The conservative perspective here is forward, not backward looking. Meanwhile, the progressives offer no advice or solutions. To them, black people are always going to be held back by invisible racism. They're essentially the ones telling the alcoholic to keep drinking booze. Jangles just doesn't seem to understand this. It's because he thinks libertarians are conservative. I'd be perfectly fine with the government breaking up some of these big multinational corporations. The more market competition, the better. If the government wants to regulate the economy to make it more conducive to people getting married and forming families, I'm all for it. Leftists like Jangles, though, they just want to expand the welfare state. You know, because the welfare state has been such a success for black people. When mm -hmm. I told you earlier that people tend to justify the power systems that they've been placed into, that applies to everybody. Not just the people on top, but the people on the bottom as well. Right, so, because so those values, to, that, I'm not done. Those values, I'm not done. Those values uh, trickle down into all aspects of society. If you believe that we're in a just system and you just happen to be placed at the bottom, you're more likely to try to justify the system regardless of how actually just and equitable it is. So that's what that would look like. The same principle in the same society applying to everyone, right, not I, just white people, but also think, all people of color. I don't think that answers the question about Mexican. I actually answered the question but, quite directly. Um, all right. But uh, so, so, so presumably that would hold for black athletes uh, who dominate in almost every sport. Uh, that would hold for uh, yep. black pop stars, I guess. Mm -hmm. All that. So they all have their own version of fragility based on their uh, their their privilege in those respective professions. Is that right? Yep. We wouldn't call it black fragility because they didn't get there because they were black. Didn't they? No. Didn't they? Are you seriously suggesting that there are some of the black pop stars who are currently uh, 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 actually no? Are they on merit? Are you seriously? Are you seriously? Are you seriously suggesting that there is something about Cardi B of musical talent or creative merit? that suggests that she should be where she is. Are you really saying there's anything to her other than her skin color? Let's hear if, from if, Jangles. If, if so, you risk being laughed out of the room. Go ahead, Justin. <laughs> why haven't, why hasn't every black person been to the top of the music charts then if it's just because of her skin color? Under your own theory though, black fragility must exist. Over 20% of the U.S. population is Hispanic or Asian. The percentage of Asian or Hispanic movie stars or pop musicians is nowhere even remotely close to that figure. White and black people seem to exclusively dominate these privileged positions in our society. So yeah, if you're a famous black musician and believe your success is due to merit, you'd have black fragility. We do summary quick wrap-up statements we'll go to q a as it has admittedly well, wandered i mean a bit. Can, can we can we maybe we could just switch away from what is obviously not working um and and maybe just uh, have questions from from people who are watching and 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 perhaps god damn it half this video is gonna be q a if i knew that i wouldn't have split my review into two parts now i'm gonna have to review super chats fuck this debate now before I torture myself watching these two respond to super chats, let's call the debate. The winner is... Nobody. Jangle's entire argument was white people could be biased. They might have a motivation to ignore racism. Now Jangle's painstakingly made this same argument again and again throughout the entire debate. Whenever Milo tried to steer the discussion into something that might create an actual back and forth, Jangles got upset and brought it back. Since Jangles failed to prove really anything, I would say that he lost. Milo also lost. He didn't even seem like he wanted to be in the debate. 
The entire time, he just kept going on and on about how he wanted to have an honest, open conversation. That's not a debate, though. If you wanted to do something like that, you wouldn't have agreed to debate someone. You wouldn't go on a YouTube channel called Modern Day Debates. Now, in the first part of my review, I predicted that Milo was doing this to troll with Jangles. However, it's real clear by the end of this debate that Milo is actually being sincere. What is the point of any of this? There's nothing to do with what we showed up to debate. <laughs> what is the point of this conversation? I'm starting to think that as well. I've shown up to try to be courteous and gentlemanly, and I'm being called buddy as though I were a fucking dog. Um, and, and, and we're having discussions about sort of, you know, like, we're sort of bouncing from race issue to race issue. Uh, How is it that Milo, a guy who was once considered a king among trolls, not understand this? Why doesn't he seem to understand how politics works? I mean, this has been his career for years now. He also really didn't seem to prepare anything for the debate. No arguments or really anything. It just seems like he was winging it the whole time. Now Milo says multiple times during the debate that this is all Jangles fault. Jangles did say in his opening statement that he would refuse to talk about white fragility and would only debate Milo on the issue of modern day slavery. However, during the middle of the debate, it was clear that Jangles was perfectly fine with actually talking about white fragility. So where were Milo's responses and arguments? For not even trying, I would say that Milo lost the debate as well. Finally, talking about losers, we'd have to also point to the audience. Political debates by their very nature are prone to be unexciting. Average people would find them to be simply too boring to watch. For people like myself who do like to watch debates, it's because of the information content and the arguments. The problem with this debate is it had zero information content. It only consisted of one argument which Jangles made over and over again. If anyone won, it's James Coons. Apparently, he got these guys to spend more time responding to super chats than actually debating. Epilogue, the super chats. I hate super chats. You could have the most interesting content that's ever been featured on YouTube. The second though that you stop what you're doing and start answering super chats, it grinds to a complete halt. There are some channels where I enjoy their content, but I just can't watch them because of the super chats. Now, I'm not knocking people for using them. If you have a huge audience and you want to monetize it, I get it. It's especially fair given the fact that YouTube fucks around with political content so much. But anyways, I should stop trying to delay the inevitable. Let's watch some of these super chats. We're going to jump into these and get through as many as we possibly can. Thanks for your first one from Sigifredo Sarabia. Thanks, said Jangles, there are implications. By the way, as we mentioned, super chats, some of these are just comments. Said Jangles or Justin, there are implications if a white male calls it, quote, fragility and their wife or white uh, girlfriend calls it white supremacy? Would that say something about the white community when comparing to others? Say that one more time. I didn't understand that either. Me neither. We're going to move to the next one. Ugh. We're not off to a great start here, folks. Flamenco, thanks for your question, said, Thoughts on the Chinese term, Biazo, which means white left, in regard to white leftist race relations that spawned outside of historical and narrative context. Are you fucking kidding me? Who would ask something like this? Good lord. Okay, well, let's see what Jangles, the great intellectual, has to say. I don't know of any sort of, like, broad systemic relations that have no cultural or historical context. Gotcha. Gotcha? I don't see how that answered the question, but uh, I guess let's pretend it did and just keep reading these super chats. Cree Rose, thanks for your question, said, It's called people fragility, not white fragility. And they said, nobody likes to reflect on their own flaws. Like you, for example, you're using a slave-made CPU, sir. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, almost definitely. Yeah, there are sla there's slave labor in there. I don't know if this person realizes that they agree <laughs> with my entire proudly. point. Yeah, no, I'm saying this is my entire point. What I'm saying is I am a part of a system where it was extremely unlikely that I was going to be able to avoid things that probably contribute to a system I would find objectionable. And so 
it's really dumb to feel personally responsible, but you can work to uh, make a better system in which this doesn't happen anymore. For the love of God, let's not go back to the slavery stuff. Look, we all know these third world workers work for chump change in unsafe working conditions. They're not slaves though. Why does everyone now think that everyone in the third world is a slave? Next question we have from Our Father in the Green says, As much as I want to partially agree with Milo on personal responsibility, does Jangles think that there can be both a fusion of systemic reforms and community organizing to prevent youth falling, regardless of party preference? Yep. Good God, who the fuck is writing this stuff? We're almost done, right? There's still a half hour of this left? God damn it! Gotcha. This question from Nick says, Jangles, why didn't you write, quote, white fragility when it really inconvenienced Milo's arguments? I think they mean... I don't... I'm... My only guess is... I, I, genu I genuinely don't understand what that's asking. Gotcha. I'm sorry. We'll move... Move to the next one. Carolyn, Dr. Carolyn Borisenko, thanks for your question, says, as an actual psychologist, I just want to point out that there are no sources in white fragility to back up the main premise of the book. Look at the references in the back. There are hardly any. I know. I seriously read this entire book. I hated every second of reading this book because I had to do so much research outside of it. I had to find, I had to like look at, like try to guess what she was trying to say, go to Google Scholar, then go to Sci-Hub to find out all these. Like it was horrendously written from an academic perspective. I had to look up it, all um, of this stuff. Did it Wait a minute. If you did all of this research, why didn't you bring up any of it during the debate? You didn't cite one empirical source for anything you said. You just rationalized the entire debate. Any asshole can argue some theory that they made up. If you want to actually do a good job during the debate, then present actual evidence. That's what I want to see during a debate. You know, stuff I could look up myself. Stuff that I could use potentially and learn about. You provided none of that. I think it's done me quite Next, good. we do have a question from Sigifredo Sarabia. Takes a second shot. Says, well, if America was founded by whites, Justin, where in history would you say whites became the victim of what they built? And why is America no longer considered a melting pot to even begin to consider others? Can you ask that again? I honestly don't think it's going to get better. I'm sorry, folks, but some of these are questions... These, are these questions like... Uh, well, can uh, you... Rave, can, random, if you... They're randomly generated, aren't they? These questions are coming <laughs> from some sort of algorithm. These are real questions. Beings. Let's see. We do I have... I refuse to believe that your viewers are this incomprehensible. Really? You all heard me yell fuck when they brought up the Q&A, right? That's because I knew it would be like this. Next up, the Red Elephants, thanks for your question, said, the 1994 bill did not lead to mass incarceration. This is a myth. Incarceration rates soared in the 70s. Black crime rates have quadrupled since the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Blacks need to change their culture, starting with fathers. Holy shit. It's a miracle. An actually good super chat. Red Elephants just made the exact same point I made in the first part of my review. Oh, I just want to point out the red elephants like uh, Vincent James is a Nazi. And this is not the liberal left thing. No. Well, he's a, Nazi, a he's a Nazi. He left he's a you race in the realist. Dust. Who, he left no. you in the dust okay. when you debated him. So uh, he's a, I'm he's sure a, I have no he, idea who I this I, is. Uh... I, I, happen to, I happen not to agree with that characterization at all. But if yeah, you he is. Go, if you, uh, if let's you, let's I, trust I, Miles' characterization of Nazis. I'm sure I, everybody's going to take that seriously. I don't agree with that characterization, but if he is a Nazi, he's a Nazi sorry. What's up, James? bleeding on the side of the road. I don't know this person's background but just to be fair to their question james, they have a question oh, I, I do need to put, point this out they're challenging i'm sorry you james you're really a, quiet just a, on a historical basis yeah, they are i still can't hear you you we serious can't you. can't hear me at all yeah oh there he is there you yeah, go. You yeah. yeah okay you. great thanks and their question was just challenging you on a historical point so if you do want to respond okay yeah on a historical point uh i have no idea what they're talking about i have no idea what they're talking about 
Gotcha. <laughs> you can take that as a dig against me. I have no idea what they're talking about. Are you fucking kidding me? Let me get this straight. Jangle's response to this is to call the super chatter a Nazi. Does he even know for sure that it's Vincent James and not just some other asshole who uses red elephants as their YouTube moniker? You can literally name your YouTube avatar whatever you want. Even more pathetic that after all he has to say in response is, you're a Nazi, hopes that James Coons reads another super chat. When James fails to do that and confronts him on the answer to the question, Jangles admits that he has no idea what he's talking about and can't provide a response. Fuck it. This debate does have an actual winner. Red Elephants, whether it's Vincent James or not, is the real winner of the debate. A fucking super chatter won the debate. Watching that super chat made me happy. So happy that I'm not ruining it by watching more of these super chats. Congratulations to Red Elephants for pointing out what should have been the most pivotal piece of information discussed during the entire debate. You win. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video and you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please support small YouTube channels like mine by subscribing. Thanks. <laughs>